mail time. Here it is. Sun's Origin, the newest standalone pack for Unmatched, a two fighter pack here. Um, and I also got in a pack of foil cards for this set. And I'm actually not gonna be keeping these, I'm gonna be giving away to you guys. So at the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can get your hands on these two. Um, so going back to the set here, this is one that I have been excited for. I know nothing about these two, but I'm very excited to learn. I love just the artwork um, that they did with this set. And, Seems like the style of kind of a single fighter versus a, an army with his two honor guards. Um, I've been trying to keep myself <laughs> as blind to this as possible so that I could go in here blind with you guys and kind of find out myself instead of getting all the spoilers. Um, but one thing I do want to point out, right when I opened the box, I did notice we have a one battlefield here. So we're, we're sticking to uh, just having one-sided boards, which is okay. I guess we shouldn't be greedy and want our two boards, but hey, they, they gave us two boards for the longest time, so. You know, I, sh I should be expecting by two boards. Um, and then also I did notice on here, the barcode has these like flame design on there, which is also very fun. Um, yeah, so Oda Nobunaga is our first character here, and then Tomo goes in. So we have a single fighter and then a uh, hero with two sidekicks. And that's the only spoil I really got on this guy is that I saw he has two sidekicks and they have different icons because they have more than one health each, but they have their own health dials. Um, that's kind of where the spoiler where I saw that is. They have three health dials total for their team. Um, but yeah, um, before we open it up here, I do want to take a look at the artwork on the box, actually. Because if you saw my unboxing of uh, Adventures, kind of had a problem. They changed the way they did the artwork on the box. Because usually we get uh, some nice artwork from the cards um, on the side of the box. So we have for both characters, they're both getting two pieces of art. But then on the inside of the box, they usually give us even more art. Let's take a look. Ooh, wow. Okay, so I have not seen this before, but this looks fantastic. Let's just take this all the way off. But yeah, they give us even more artwork that matches with the artwork on the top of the box. Um, I love that it's kind of fading through that line with this like smoky effect. Very cool artwork there. Let's see our <coughs> main guy, Oda, with his two honor guards. And then, yes, so there's, there's Gozen Tomo. Um, sorry, Tomo goes in, but yeah, this artwork looks fantastic. And they're really taking some, ooh, this one. I, I'm in, I really like his art. I love that kind of tannish brown with the red. It's very, the colors really work for this guy. Um, but yeah, on, for whatever reason, on Unmatched Adventures, they just kind of like put <laughs> very generic pieces of art on one side and then copied it to the other. So we didn't get this just wonderful looking box. So I'm glad we're going back to this. Uh, but one thing they are doing, I can already tell here, that they did in Unmatched Adventures is they split the core rules from the set rules. Um, so let's move this real fast. Yeah, there's the set rules. So that all the core rules for unmatched are on here. So you don't have to care around multiple of this, multiples of the core rules just to know the set rules. Cause the set rules are just this little leaflet, about two or three pages, just telling you what the actual characters do. So it's a lot easier to carry around a bunch of these cause they're super thin. Um, but yeah, we're gonna skip the core rules cause we already know how to play unmatched. Now we can really take a look at the leaflet to see if there's anything special here we got. Volume one and volume two. And then, yep, a couple of the other two hero sets, um, including this one. <laughs> and then the digital game. And then, yep, there's Unmatched Adventure. So nothing new, no little hints at new sets there. So we'll, we'll be tossing that. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at this. I love the the rose petals kind of going through with the, what do we call it, the pink blossom trees, whatever they're called. Um, and then look at the back here. Oh, this is a new one. So they have a cultural consultant here. Okay, cool. So I'm guessing they, you know, use this guy as a culture consultant to be a consultant for the culture. So that's cool. I'm glad they take the extra step to make sure they're doing everything correctly. Um, so let's, yeah, let's take a look here. Kind of goes over everything that comes in the box. A good history on both. Um, so Japan in the 1500s and at 12th century. Um, so very cool. Uh, I'll be reading these by myself. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but I love learning the backstory of these characters. Um, then here's some special rules. So we have attack of opportunity and flanking. Uh, which once again, I'll be reading over these, then we can kind of like, talk to it together as we look through their decks. Um, but it's cool that they got new keywords. Uh, the flanking one I saw a little bit of a spoiler of, but I didn't learn what it does yet. So we'll be going back to it. Um, so yeah, so that's our set rules. And then next in our box here is our cardboard punch up for our health dials. Something that Unmatched always knocks out of the park. The only one that I've not liked so far is <laughs> Annie Christmases right here. I just think that one's ugly, <laughs> but yeah, they, these ones look fantastic. And of course we can look at these more in detail whenever we're 
looking at their decks. And then next here is our board, which we already know is the same board on both sides. Just one has the see-through, so you can see the map a little bit better. Um, but this one here is Azuchi Castle. Um, so I'm not sure which character this one goes to, or if to both. Um, I'm excited to learn. Um, but just looking at here very quickly, I do like that it's almost like a multi-level thing. It looks like you go down the stairs here, then down the stairs even more to this lowest area. Uh, it'd be cool if they had what they had in uh, Volume 2, where you can... Uh, I forget what they call it, but you have extra boost if you're attacking down. Um, the high ground is what it's called. Um, so it'd be cool if they brought back the high ground, because there's, yeah, there's a ladder here, a ladder there, and a bunch of staircases going around. So very cool. Uh, so we can move on and quickly take a look at the box. Um, once again, Unmatched does perfect every time. I love that they have, or yeah, so they have all, both of them labeled correctly. They have spots for the sidekicks to go. Uh, perfect invitations for the characters so they don't get jostled around and broken. Um, which, of course, we can look at these more in detail, but yeah, we have some very small little pieces that we don't want broken. Um, and then actually, yeah, it actually looks like his character doesn't fully fit into the slide. You can see like the sword pokes out. And even if I try to squeeze him in there, he's reaching both sides. So not super happy with that, but I think he'll be fine. Um, then we have all of our little plastic buttons here to keep the health dials together. Um, the deck for Telmo. And then of course there's spots for the health dial, but we'll look at the box later. Um, and then the deck for Oda here, and then his two sidekicks, and we'll look at all those in more detail later. So yeah, let's uh, let's look at the fighters. Starting off with Oda Nobunaga. I'm hopefully saying that correctly. Um, this guy has such an awesome miniature. I have not looked through his deck. I don't know how he plays, but this <laughs> miniature is so cool. I want to play as him already. I love this this like very beigey tan color. Uh, with him holding his huge sword out, like commanding his troops, and just the details on this miniature. He's so stinking cool. Um, we also get a sidekick real fast. And I kind of mentioned the unboxing, but he has two sidekicks. They're not one health sidekicks, and they all have their own health dial. And you can see they're both honor guards. Um, we have this blue one here, and then we have this red one. And of course, same on both sides, but very, very cool looking. Love even just the, <laughs> they take up a third of the disc, but they still have some cool artwork on them. Um, and then before we move on to the deck, we can also just quickly take a look at their health dials here. Oda obviously has 13. And I have noticed, I think on all four of the health dials, they all have interesting zeros. Um, so I don't know what that's kanji for. I'm guessing this is kanji for his name on the side here, but I'm not, maybe that's zero, maybe it's death, who knows? Hopefully I'll have a translation there. Um, if not, I could not figure out how to type that symbol in. Um, and on the back, we have some more flames. It looks like arrows, like raining fire, which is pretty cool. Hopefully that's thematic to him. Um, but I do like it. We have a sword on the side here, which you'll see on the other fighter, uh, Tomo, that she also has a sword on her side. Um, and then moving on to the honor guard health dials here. So this is what I was saying before, that it matches that red symbol. So this is the health dial for that one, so you don't get them mixed up. And of course, the same little artwork that was on the side there. This is for the honor guard. Same kind of arrows raining down on the back here. And then same flames. Um, and then, yes, so it's the exact same artwork on the back. Not complaining, just pointing it out. And then we have our blue honor guard over here. So also six health, and I didn't point it on that one, but they also do have special zeros. But yeah, just that symbol matches the token up here, as well as the artwork of him swinging his sword. Then we can move on to his character card here. So quickly just take a look at the back. Um, all the same as our other characters, just like to see if they updated anything. So this is Oda no Nobunaga. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. I'm so nervous I'm not gonna be saying any of these names right. Uh, so this is a 13 health fighter with a move of two. And then he also has two sidekicks, the honor guards, uh, and they are six health, so just kind of tells you two there. Um, and they are both melee. And this is Master Strategist. Other friendly fighters in Oda Nobunaga's zone add one to the value of their played combat cards. Oda Nobunaga does not benefit from this ability. If I'm not misremembering correctly, uh, so it says combat cards and not attack cards. This will be to attack cards, defense cards, and versatile cards. So a plus one. And also it doesn't say to his honor guards. I also want to point out that it says other friendly fighters. So if you're playing adventures or 2v2, this guy's really, really good. He's a great team player. Um, he's gonna be bumping everybody's attacks up. So he, you kind of want him just sitting just slightly behind to boost everybody's attacks that's around him. But 
Let's take a look at his deck and see if he's, you know, he's not sitting behind. Maybe he's also attacking pretty hard. Um, so this is his card back here. I believe it has the same kanji symbols. Yes, it does. So I'm guessing that's his name there. Um, we have that same symbol that we've seen. Or, oh, actually, yeah, they're different. So this is a whole new symbol compared to the two Honor Guard ones. But the same flames popping up, same arrows raining down in the back there. And there's Oda in the Honor Guard. So I'm just going to call him Oda from now on to hopefully not <laughs> keep messing it up. Uh, but I will see that... Oh, actually, you know what? I am totally wrong. The blue symbol here, I was messed up by the red border, but that blue symbol's in the middle there. And then this flower symbol is up on his sword there. So cool details. So it's maybe his sword and the two honor guards there. But let's, let's take a look at his deck here. Starting with Oda specific cards. This is an attack of five, boost of two, two copies. And this is student of war. After combat, draw a number of cards equal to the amount of combat damage dealt to the opposing fighter. So pff, that, that could draw you a lot of cards. And he has two of those, so yeah. So two five power cards off the bat. So yeah, he's definitely not staying in the, in the back. He's he's also attacking pretty hard. Um, and then this is Pragmatism. It is a three defense for Oda, a boost of one, three copies, and it is immediately cancel all effects on your opponent's card. So I've kind of noticed, we'll see if he has a feint in his deck, but I've noticed with the adventures and now with this set, they're kind of steering away from having feint be in most people's decks. Um, so this is a, you know, not a versatile, it's a defense this time for three instead of two. So it's a little bit stronger when it comes to defending, but you can attack with it. Which I mean, honestly, a lot of times, I've, I usually save my feints for defending anyway, so I kind of like this card better, but I'm also just admiring the gorgeous artwork on these cards. Next here is a scheme for Oda. It is a three boost, two copies, and this is Demon King of the Sixth Heaven. It is deal two damage to each opposing flanked fighter. So I forgot to explain flanked here, but Oda has a special keyword in his deck that flanked here. Uh, that means that the it's any opponent with two of your controlled fighters adjacent to it. So any of your three that you control, if they are adjacent to the, like any fighter, not even the ones in the common, any adjacent fighter, they are considered flanked. Um, so you could have you know these two adjacent to one fighter and then another fighter over here adjacent to both of them. Both of those two are flanked, so they both would get two damage. Um, so yeah, so that is his schemes there and then moving on these are cards for specifically the honor guard this is a two attack one boost two copies and this is sun and moon during combat if the opposing fighter is flanked ignore the value of your opponent's card so <laughs> that's pretty scary i mean not super scary because this is only a two attack but i mean you get a free cancel if you just have both your honor guards surrounding them or he said even oda next to them so yeah two copies of those and the next here is another Honor Guard card, an attack of four, boost of one, three copies. And this is Lightning and Thunder. Immediately, if the opposing fighter is flanked, cancel all effects on your opponent's card. So kind of same as the last one, but after combat, move your fighter up to two spaces. So but this is a four instead of that other one. And then actually, now that I'm, <laughs> I should correct myself here. This one is you ignore the value of your opponent's card. This is when you cancel all the effects. So two different effects, but both... You know, we really care about being flanked, really care about surrounding. Um, honestly, if they re-submitted you know, submitted some old decks here, the, the flanked keyword would be very cool to have on the uh, Raptors, because um, I, I believe they have that kind of wording, but it's not called flanked in that deck. Um, so that's all of our Honor Guard cards. Moving on to any card, so all three of our guys can use this one. This is a attack of three, boost of three, three copies, and fire in the flames. During combat, if the opposing fighter is flanked, this card's value is five instead. Uh, so that, once again, <laughs> he really cares about surrounding you. So it seems like you're gonna be pretty agile and kind of pick at it one at a time and not get surrounded by these guys. So that's all of our attack cards from this deck. And the next here is a any of two, uh, two defense, two boost, three copies, and this is Spring the Trap. Immediately your fighter may swap spaces with an adjacent friendly fighter. If they do, the other fighter is now the defender. After combat, deal one damage to the opposing fighter. Um, so yeah, if you're worried about, you know, you always both flip your cards, you take a lot of damage, you might want to take Oda out of there and swap them with an honor guard so that they, they take the brunt of that damage. You get three of those, so it's very nice to keep all your guys close together. And then next, here's, that's all of our defense cards from this deck. Next is an any versatile with two boost four copies, and this is battle maneuvers. After combat, draw one card, then move each of your fighters up to two spaces. So that's all three of your fighters, and you're drawing a card uh, up to four times. So he's he's not gonna be running out of cards pretty time soon. This is a good cycle. 
Um, and then next here we have a familiar one. This is an any versatile of three, two boost, two copies. This is a momentous shift. During combat, if your fighter started this turn in a different space, this card's value is five instead. So you can definitely combo this by moving your fighters and then the moved fighter can then also attack someone else or that same uh, opponent. So very cool, love to have those in the deck. Next here is a any versatile of one, one uh, boost, three copies. This is patience and strategy. If your opposing fighter is flanked, your fighter recovers two health. Oh, so pretty good. So not only can you kind of like poke at them and bait out some good defenses, but you get to heal up. And this is for any, so all three of them can heal with these cards. Um, that's all of our uh, combat cards. Next here we have a scheme for any. This is two boost, three copies. This is reinforce. Choose two different effects. Each a fighter, friend, uh, each friendly fighter recovers one health, draw two cards, or gain one action. And we have three of those. So that's, in my opinion, pretty strong. Uh, we can, you know, with all these cards here, you, have to, you can't pick the same one twice. So it's another three health you can recover here but it's also six card draws, um, if you use card draw each three times, but also action gains. So you can get some long turns here, you know, gain an action, draw two cards, if you use both of those two, this is literally just a replenish your hand for free and don't lose an action. Uh, pretty crazy. So yeah, I definitely like this guy. He's very interesting. Uh, what I like about him is that he has, he's like an army, but you don't want to split him up. You want to surround the opponent or keep them next to each other because there's a lot of cards in here that like them to be next to each other. Very cool. Uh, let's move on to Tomo. Next here is Tomo Gozen. So let's take a look at this miniature here. Another great color choice. I love this minty green that they chose. Um, and the pose is very, very cool. Kind of looks like they're jumping backwards to get some distance and get that bow out. Um, one that I'd be a little bit worried about accidentally dropping and this piece snapping, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but looking at her, she looks awesome. I love this big staff that follows her leg and of course her, her quiver in the back. Another great, great miniature. Um, and then we can quickly take a look at the health dial. <laughs> My thumb got stuck in between there. I was worried I was going to break it this fast. I don't want to do that on camera. Uh, next here is our health dial for Tomo Gozen. Very cool. Love the trees with the petals flying in the air. This kind of uh, pattern that we're pretty used to. Um, we can check. I've not seen we have a special zero. We do. It's the same symbol. Once again, I'll need to figure out what that symbol exactly is, but I'm guessing it's, you know, zero or death. Um, then we have some more kanji here, probably saying her name. And then of course the sword. And I want to bring back uh, Oda's real fast. You can see they both have swords on the right side, one pointing down, one pointing up. Uh, I still need to do some research on these characters, but I'm gonna guess this one's pretty, not evil, but you know, uh, with the fire and pointing down, and this one's pointing up and kind of more blissful. Uh, it's kind of good versus evil here, I like it. And so we can move on from the health dial. And let's take a look at this character card. This is Tomo Gozen, a ranged fighter with 14 health, move of two. And then our quote here is, only if I could find a worthy foe. Well, what about three worthy foes in this matchup? Um, and yeah, so this is a fun matchup, um, just with this one being ranged and the other two being melee. They of course want to surround Tomo, but if Tomo can keep her distance um, with the range, then they can't set off their flanks. So very cool. And then so our special ability here is Attack of Opportunity. When an opposing hero leaves Tomo goes in zone, deal one damage to that hero. Um, so interesting. So yeah, so you can't run away from Tomo here. Uh, but a lot of times ranged fighters versus melee, the melee is going to be constantly running up to you. So it's, if they ever retreat, they get one damage. Um, and I'll have to double check the rules. I'll give you an answer here. Um, but I'm wondering if whenever Tomo leaves, does that deal one damage? I'm guessing not because it says when an opposing hero leaves, not whenever you leave their zone. Um, very cool. They, <laughs> she, she pings you uh, one damage and you try to run away. Very cool. Um, so then let's take a look at the deck here. Uh, I've been very much liking the way they did these decks. I can bring back Tomo here, take a look at his deck. Uh, but I like, once again, they always like to match up their two. Of course, sword going down, sword going up. Fire in the corner, those, uh, you know, trees in the corner. Looks very cool. Uh, I think I like Tomo just a little bit more. I think that tan and red just look great together. This minty green, that kind of lavender also looks great. So starting off with Tomo's attack cards here, we have an attack of seven, okay, starting strong, with a boost of four and two copies. This is Witness My Last Battle. This attack can only target a fighter adjacent to Tomo Gozen, play it face up after combat and turn. Okay, so yeah, so it's a strong seven, but uh, you have to know exactly what you're doing. But you know, even when you're getting attacked with a seven and you know it, you don't always have something to attack. And of course, you don't wanna cancel this effect because you'll cancel the end turn. 
Uh, but usually, I guess Tomo would probably play it on their second turn anyways, just so they cause they don't want to you know maximize their turn anyways. Um, but very interesting uh, you know interactions that will happen on this card. So the next tier we have Tomo's attack card of three, boost of one, two copies, fearsome strength. Immediately, Tomo goes and may swap spaces with an adjacent fighter. After combat, deal one damage to an adjacent fighter. So interesting. So it said you could attack from. So since she's ranged, she can attack from you know maybe one or two spaces away. Jump those two spaces to swap. Or it says, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. It says an adjacent fighter. So you have to be adjacent anyway. So we're, we are ranged, but we're getting some bonuses for being ranged. So it looks like she does you know great with range, but also even better in her uh, adjacent melee attacks. So I'm gonna start to stop riffing here and just read the whole card and understand it. <laughs> I keep getting too excited. Uh, so next here is an attack of four, boost of one, two copies, and this is five against thousands. So thematic to this matchup. After combat, if Tomo goes in is adjacent to an opposing fighter, you may discard a card to put this card back in your hand. Okay, interesting. So, you know, a four is nice to have. To just keep on attacking with four. That's pretty strong. And the next here is an attack of two, boost of one, two copies, a warrior's way. After combat, move the opposing fighter up to three spaces. Then if they are a hero, place Tomo goes in a space adjacent to them. Okay, so you can separate the hero from their uh, sidekick. So that'd be a really nice thing to do uh, with the matchup of Medusa, getting her away from her harpies and just kind of attacking her directly. So I, I really like this card. And then next here, I believe this is a card we've seen with Robin Hood, but this is a two attack, one boost, three copies, piercing shot. After combat, draw two cards. So there's six card draw right there. That's all of our attack cards. Next here is a uh, defense three for Tomo. It is two boost, two copies, and this is refuse to retreat. Immediately, Tomo goes and cannot leave her space for the rest of, her, of the turn. After combat, if the opposing fighter is adjacent, your opponent discards one card. So, yeah, so... Not, not a strong, strong defense. Three is pretty good, but you know, then you're immediately stuck there until the uh, until the, for the rest of the turn. From obviously their turn, because you're defending on their turn. But yeah. Next here is a defense of two, two copies, three. I'm oh, sorry, two boost, three copies, and this is deeds of valor. During combat, Tomo goes and cannot take more than two combat damage this turn. This is a great card. Love that. You know, especially if you know something big attacks coming. And then that's all of our defense cards. Moving on to our versatile. We have a versatile of three, three boosts, two copies. And this is confront any demon or god. After combat, draw one card. Then if you lost the combat, look at your opponent's hand and choose one card for them to discard. Great. So you're getting that one card draw either way. But if you lose, you get an extra bonus. Of course, this is uh, versatile, so attacking or defending. Next versatile here, versatile of three, three boosts, three copies. A worthy opponent. During combat, if the opposing fighter is a hero, this card's value is five instead. So I like that. So she's, you know, you want to save this to, to finish the game or do some big damage to those people. That's that's three fives right there uh, if you're attacking the hero. So very strong against a solo fighter. And the next here is a versatile two, one copy. I'm oh, sorry, one boost, three copies. And this is Flash of Steel. Immediately, if the opposing fighter is a hero, cancel all effects on your opponent's car. After combat, if the opposing fighter is adjacent, deal one damage to them. Okay, so this is, once again, where you don't have a feint in this deck, or at least I haven't seen one yet, uh, but it's a two versatile, but this time it has to be a hero, but since you have the downside of only heroes get fainted, uh, you you know, you know deal one damage if they're adjacent. So honestly, once again, it's worse in a way from feint, but stronger in the right situations. So I like that. There's three copies. Next one, another familiar one here, a four versatile, one copy, Three, oh, sorry, one booster copy to keep getting those mixed up. Uh, this is Skirmish. After combat, if you won the combat, move the fighter in the combat up to two spaces. So, once again, we, we are used to that card. Uh, next here is a Scheme with a boost of two, three copies. And this is Lord Kiso's final stand. Move Tomo Gozen up to three spaces. She may move through sidekicks. Then choose one. Tomo Gozen recovers two health or gain one action. So both decks here have some good healing, some good card draw, and some good action gain. So three actions you can gain. So yeah, I really, I'm excited to play this one. I like the interactions of the solo versus the army. And honestly, I think I do like Tomo, but I think uh, Oda's going to be my one to go with. So let's, let's look at my final thoughts here. So I don't have much for my final thoughts, but I just want to quickly show off how nicely these guys fit inside the box here. Unmatched really does it unlike no other. I mean, they're literally unmatched, uh, pardon the pun, but everything just always fits in here. So nice and snug, and I'm never worried about things jostling around and getting broken. Um, even this with Oda here, sort poking out, I know that once, you know, 
the board is in here and our manuals. Everything is nice and snug. Nothing's gonna get broken. Um, so also before I go, I do want to quickly show off. I have two foils uh, for this set. One for Tomo, one for Go. Oh, sorry, one for Oda, one for Goes in here. Um, and I'm gonna be giving these away. So I have a secret message hidden throughout this video. First person to comment on my Instagram page, this page here, that secret message. Um, I'll be posting a picture of Sun's Origin, so just comment on that picture. Uh, but whoever posts that secret message first will be getting both of these. And we have a foil of Fire and the Flames here where all the fire is nice and shiny, looks gorgeous. And I also have a copy of Witness My Last Battle with all those wind flurries. So yeah, go ahead and go hunt for that secret message. First person to find it will get both of these sent to them. Um, yeah, I gotta go. My toast is burning.